Hello and welcome to the Monday, May 22nd, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We've got a couple of interesting diaries from this weekend to talk about. First, a third part to Didier's analysis of an HTA file. Last episode, uh, did he ended up with a bad file that now is being analyzed further? This bad file turned out to be heavily base64 encoded. So did he had to work past that and shows a couple tricks how to improve uh, the decoding here until well, he finally ends up uh, with a PowerShell script and from there with some .NET code as well. So as usual with Didier's diaries, great material for any reverse analysis person here to walk through it and hopefully learn from it. So with attackers using all these different encodings, the question of course is how do attackers get it right? After all, as you can see in Didier's diary, it's not always easy to decode all of these different coding types. Well. The answer comes from Xavier in an earlier uh, diary. Xavier has an example where the attacker actually didn't get the encoding right. Looks sort of like a UTF-8 versus UTF-16 confusion here. When you look at the email, you're seeing what appears to be sort of Chinese characters, but well, it's just badly encoded, which is why Outlook doesn't properly display the email So luckily nothing to worry about. Of course, attackers will eventually fix the encoding issue and uh, the email may give you a little heads up as to what email to expect next. And more problems for PyPy, the Python module registry. Apparently they are now getting so many malicious uh, registrations for new accounts and new projects that they're no longer able to actually filter them appropriately. So they announced uh, yesterday that they will for now suspend the registration of new accounts as well as new projects. The incident note states that they will regroup over the weekend. Uh, We'll see what uh, they end up with, uh, but Uh, hopefully sometime early this week, they'll resume normal operations. And while we're talking about PyPy, William Woodruff uh, wrote a blog post uh, looking into some of the PGP signatures uh, published uh, with uh, PyPy and well found that this is not really sort of what I would call a well-maintained managed effort problem of course in general with pgp is it's not like a certificate so just by signing something with a pgp key there is really no assertion that this pgp key actually is owned by a particular individual unless of course the pgp key is signed with a signature that you trust and this appears to be sort of the problem here that there are a lot of sort of these isolated uh, pgp keys being used that are only being used here for pypy that are not published to any public uh, key repositories and that's another little issue that comes up here that there aren't really that many left of them and if they are published they're not necessarily signed by another uh, signature so that of course uh, will make it very difficult to verify that a particular key is actually the right key to use for the piece of software that you're downloading making this entire pgp signing effort for pypy somewhat useless and well if you talk about issues with packages and the repository of packages we also have to talk about npm uh, reversing labs found uh, two npm packages that uh, did contain remote admin tools so those famous rats sort of one of those impersonation attempts uh, the package for example they're looking at here is node.js encrypt agent there is a legitimate package called agent base and they're probably sort of hoping to be mistaken for that package in that as part of the readme and such they name they refer to the name agent base as well as also in some of the links they're actually 
linking to the legit GitHub repository for Agent Base. This package was sitting in NPM for about two months. And of course, you'll find more details at Reversing Labs, link in the show notes. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Did I miss a story that I should have covered? Well, uh, please uh, let me know. And I'm always taking sort of you know story suggestions that I uh, should include, preferably not from marketing teams. But either way, thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.